API stands for Application Programming Interface, which basically allows one software to talk to another. This is commonly done through a client and a server, where basically a client can be a phone, a computer, or etc. So when you use an app like Instagram, there will be a server that expresses a bunch of services that can be accessed through the HTTP protocol. And in essence, HTTP is just basically how data is transmitted through the web. So when you open the app Instagram on your phone, there is code that will make an HTTP request to power your feed. The server will receive the requests and then search for relevant pictures to show you. Once it finds the pictures, it will return the pictures as data in a format like JSON. And then the app will use the data to display the pictures. And the most common API used in the world is RESTful, which stands for Representational State Transfer. And a RESTful API organizes resources into URIs that are intuitive and super easy to use. And as programmers, we can get access to these resources by creating a request to a server. The request will include the URI that you want to access, a verb that represents the request method, which basically just boils down to CRUD. Next, we have the header, which provides the metadata for the request. So you can specify the type of data you want. You can provide an authorization token so that the server knows who you are and etc. And finally, we have the body, where you can provide extra information for the request. And once everything is ready, the request will be sent to the server through IP packets. If everything goes well, the server will receive the request. And everything on the server side is basically a black box. We don't know what it does, but because it is an API, the inputs and outputs are documented. So based on this contract, we know what kind of data to get back. And in addition, RESTful APIs are stateless, where requests are independent of each other, and the server does not store any information about the client. For example, pretend you went to a store and you want to buy a pair of shoes. You ask the clerk for a pair of Nike shoes in size 9. They give you the shoes and then they walk away. Now you want to get the shoes in size 10. And when you make this request, a different clerk will assist you. So it is important that you provide all of the necessary information for the request. In this example, you should tell the clerk that you want a pair of Nike shoes in size 10. So basically, stateless just makes the server more predictable, where if given X input, Y output is always returned. So once the server has the data ready, it will send a response back to the client. The response will have a status code, where 200 just means success. Next, we have the header, which contains details about the server. And last, we have the body, which contains the data that we have requested for. And that's basically RESTful API in a nutshell. Thanks for watching. Make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and comment, and I'll see you in the next lesson.